Good day. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Douglas Harder, and in this topic we're going to re-emphasize that the complex numbers are a field. So in this topic we will observe and re-emphasize that complex numbers are indeed a field and therefore have the same properties as the real numbers and emphasize that most of the operations you performed in secondary school for reals and rationals also apply to complex numbers. In the last few sections and topics we've defined rectangular and polar representations of complex numbers, the complex plane, absolute values, magnitudes, angles and arguments, the addition, subtraction, additive identity and additive inverses of complex numbers, multiplication, division, the multiplicative identity and multiplicative inverses of complex numbers, integer powers, complex conjugates, and a number of other topics related to complex numbers. Apart from some of the definitions of how these operations work, most of the behaviors are more or less the same as those for the reals. All eight axioms for a field are satisfied the, by the complex numbers. Both addition and multiplication are commutative. Both addition and multiplication are associative. There is an additive identity and a multiplicative identity. Every complex number has an additive inverse. Every non-zero complex number has a multiplicative inverse and multiplication distributes over addition. Thus, everything you did in secondary school for real numbers, real polynomials, etc. are things you can do here. For example, if z and w are complex numbers, then z plus 1 times z minus 1 is z squared minus 1. z squared minus z, well we can factor out a z to get the expression on the right hand side. We can also divide the numerator by z minus 1 which leaves z plus 1. w plus z times w plus z is w squared plus 2wz plus z squared. I can simplify the expression on the left to equal the expression on the right. Also z squared plus 1 can now be factored as z minus j times z plus j. Finally, if you wanted to, you could expand out the left-hand side to see that that does actually equal the cubic polynomial on the right-hand side. There's only one really useful feature about the real numbers that are lost with complex numbers. The reals are linearly ordered. That says that if I have two real numbers, x and y, exactly one of these statements is true. Either x is less than 0, x equals 0, or x is greater than 0. There's no such natural or useful linear ordering on complex numbers. All we have is two complex numbers are either equal or they are not equal. Here's something cool. Remember those formulas we found for the geometric series? Here's a finite series, and then if the absolute value of z was less than 1, then we could also calculate the infinite series. Well, guess what? When we proved these and found these formulas, we did not use any properties of the reals that do not also exist for the complex numbers. And so both of these formulas are true for complex numbers as well. For example, if I sum from k equals 0 to 5 powers of 1 minus 2j, this formula gives me the value 22 plus 58j. If I consider the infinite series of summing powers, successive powers of 0 0.5 plus 0 0.5j, we get a formula that equals 1 plus j. Now, if you don't try, you can even check these results explicitly. For example, for the finite sum, we can just add the six terms and see that yes, indeed, it does equal 22 plus 58j. For the infinite series, we could add the first seven terms of that series and see that it's very, very close to 1 plus j. And if you want, you could just continue adding more and more of these terms and you will see that 
as n goes towards infinity, it all, the series approaches 1 plus j. Now, all of the polynomials u will be considering will have real co coefficients. That's not only in this course, but in your calculus courses, in your second year differential equations courses, in your courses on linear systems and signals, and all the applications of these. However, for fun, what are the roots of this polynomial with complex coefficients? Well, we can just use the quadratic formulas. Throw it in, and we can multiply out what's under the square root. And I'm not going to waste your time right now, but you can find the square root of negative 11 minus 60j, and that is 5 minus 6j. And so now you can calculate the two roots. The two roots are 1 plus 4j plus 5 minus 6j all over 2, that's 3 minus j. And the other one is 1 plus 4j minus 5 plus 6j all over 2, and that's negative 2 plus 5j. And thus we have factored this quadratic polynomial. This quadratic polynomial is equal to z minus 3 plus j times z plus 2 minus 5j. So in this topic, we've more or less emphasized that complex numbers are a field, just like the reals. All of the properties of the reals that you're used to, the ones that you've learned in secondary school and even elementary school, they also apply to complex numbers. It's unfortunate that we use words such as complex and imaginary for this field, as they're somewhat misleading. They're not that hard. It's just a little bit more tedious. The only real property we lose with complex numbers that we have with the real numbers is we lose the linear ordering. Here are some references, acknowledgments, the colophon, and a disclaimer. Cheers!